Thank you for joining me for Psychic Medium, Tony Green. I am super excited about today's show. First, um, yes, I do private sessions. And if you would like a private session, please go to my website, T-O-N-I-G dot info, I-N-F-O. Second, um, there are imitators out there, people pretending to be me. I know some of them. <laughs> I know. No, seriously, there are scammers out there. So be careful. Only use the link in um, the description on Blog Talk or YouTube to get to my website. And it it's kind of, it's not a normal website. It's um, a dot .info. So that should be a little bit helpful. Um, and uh, on my website, you can see all the services I offer and as well as the books that I have authored and written and authored, published. Um, and then um, what is coming up, everything I have coming up. If you are watching me on Rude Rangers TV, on any any of the streaming channels that I am on or on WSES, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you viewing me. If you're watching me on YouTube Live, please say hi in the chat or the comments and let me know that you're joining us here. If you have a question, you can call in 845 277 Now, I go live for sure every Monday at noon. Um, during the week, I also do, I try to do a second live show. This week on Wednesday, I'll be doing um, another relationship show with a co-host. My co-host this week will be Dylan. And then next Wednesday, my co-host will be Rudy from Rude Rangers TV. Now, I need to tell you, these guys are coming with some really good info for us. They're being extremely honest. So if you are in a relationship, if you're in a situation, if you do not know what's going on, or is this going someplace? Or what can I do? This is the way my partner is behaving. What can I do? Definitely call in on Wednesday. Um, and you can get, you know, my psychic ability answer. And then Dylan or Rudy's um, man answer is that the right even the right way for me to say that I don't know their man answer and trust me um Rudy from Rude Rangers I believe he's married um with children and he's had probably more than one relationship but you know what these guys have friends too they're not only pulling from their own personal experience they watch the way other men behave and they will be honest with you. Um, as Dylan asked me a couple weeks ago, before the first time he was on the show, he said, how honest can I be? And I said, brutally. I said, I don't I don't want you on the show unless you're going to be brutally honest with people with your answers. Because um, dating is like, who? it's like being in a war zone sometimes. I mean, the games people play. And that goes Male, female, uh, that is not a gender specific thing anymore. And, you know, I just want to say this, and this is an 18 over show. If you are out there on dating apps or dating or without apps, wherever you are out there doing what you're doing, I find it and this is not a judgment, please don't come at me saying you don't understand. I do understand. I get it. I, I do. You know, I get it. I'm a full grown woman. Okay, I, I get things. Okay, I, I understand them. And I'm not judging. This is more of a PSA. Please cover up, protect up, because I cannot tell you the number of people calling me um, upset because they are getting some STDs and they're the kind that stick with you for life. Okay. Like these, there might be things to help you, but there's nothing to make them poof, go away. Now you would think in today's day and age, people would be aware that even if you are suiting Charlie Brown up and Charlie Brown is downtown Charlie Brown, 
even if you are covering that baby up, <laughs> excuse my covering, <laughs> covering that baby up, you can still spread STDs. Okay, we are full grown adults here. I know some people are not aware of this. They get shocked when I say this. Have a talk with your doctor. If you are out there and you're with somebody who you do not know, or maybe you do know them and you know you haven't had this conversation and, and maybe you don't know people lie about these things, sometimes covering your junk up isn't enough. And I'm sorry, I call, yeah, I just call the man part junk, okay? Sometimes that's not enough. Um, there are certain things that can be spread even if you are using condoms. So please, for the love of all that is good in this world, protect yourself. And again, not a judgment, just a statement. Maybe don't be mm, doing things with things that you don't know about. I don't know, just, and that's not a judgment. That's just a, that's just a protect you thing, your energy, because when you're intimate with a person, you're transmitting energy between the two of you. And if they've been intimate with somebody right before, this is, and guys, this is how women know if you cheat. Straight up. And, and women, men, it goes both ways. It's not, it's not only one-sided. If a man is with a woman and they're in a relationship and that guy steps out and comes back to his woman <laughs> we feel that other person's energy. We know. Before you kiss us on the phone, we will feel that other person's energy. <laughs> yes, we will. If we are in tune with you, we will know. You can call us crazy. You can call us jealous. You can call us whatever you want to call us. Just because we don't have a picture, it doesn't mean we don't know. We know. Just because we didn't talk about it or say something to you so you could lie to us and tell us that didn't happen and we're crazy doesn't mean we didn't know. We know. Now everybody's having a light bulb moment because we know. We knew something wasn't right. We knew something was off. And let me tell you, women, if you still menstruate and you're with your man and you menstruate off cycle... <laughs> You're, men's, you're syncing up with his other woman. I'm just saying, I'm bringing facts today. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm bringing all of these facts, but I am. Okay, let's go to a happier subject because I'm sure people do not want to want me to talk about this for the whole show. Anyway, Wednesday's show is all about this stuff. You can call in and ask questions about, is this the one? Will we be together? Um why is this person behaving in this way? Hey, Todd, how are you? I hope you're having a good day. Thank you for joining me here. Okay, I'm going to take my first caller. If you do want to call in, the number is 845-277-9131. I will be answering questions. If I call your area code, please, if you have me on speakerphone or earbuds, take me off. Put the phone to your ear because the connection um, might not be clear. Remember, this is going out on TV stations, and I want to have the best audio connection possible. Also have one exact question or connection to the other side that you would like to uh, connect with. And an exact connection to the other side is like Judy, my mom, Bill, my uncle, not anyone on the other side that wants to talk with me. Okay, here we go. 310, you are the first person in the call log. How can I help you today? What's up? What's shaking? Hey, Larry, this is Vince. I'm calling from uh, New York. Hey, Vince. Um, I have mm -hmm. a two. Hey, so I have a two part job question. The first part is um, last Tuesday, um, well, last Monday, I had a job interview on Zoom with the competitor that I'm working for right now. And I'm wondering if um, you see me getting that job. The other the other thing about that question is, on Tuesday when I was at work, my boss called me into the office and said that um, he, somebody saw me going into the machine without locking and tagging it out. And I told him that's not true. I told him what happened. I told him my site that I was using 
a long a broom with a long handle, and not once did any part of my body um, become in contact with any of the moving parts of the machine. So they suspended me pending investigation. They said it would take one to three weeks. Okay. So I'm wondering if you see me getting cleared. Okay, Vince. And here's, getting my job back. Or, here's what I'm yeah. going to give you. Um, the interview, I'm feeling like that's not as strong as it could be, but I am also getting that you need to keep looking. Um, <clears throat> definitely keep looking. Keep. Uh, you are going to find something, and you're going to find something within a month. I'm going to tell you, um, you know what, whatever, whatever happened with that machine thing, um, here's the thing, just keep, keep looking. I feel like within a week, you're going to get an interview for a very good company and Within a within a month, you will, if you want, have employment someplace else. Having said that, I'm going to do the first clearing of the show that uh, we are all moving forward, and I get a no, so we're going to start that clearing. We are stuck, which is pretty much the same thing. I get a yes, so we're going to clear that. And then um, for those of us looking for work or wanting to switch jobs, uh, that we find we are finding the perfect. Um, employment for us. And I'm getting a no. So we're going to start clearing that. Who because energetically, you are kind of um, the word they're using is stifled when it comes to work. And I want you to be in a place where you're open and you know, there's a lot of opportunities coming in and moving forward. I do feel like you definitely need to keep looking. I feel like there is something coming in. It might not be the thing that you went for, but you definitely will find something very soon. Thank you so much for calling in. I'm going to go directly to the next caller, and the next caller is um, 386. Hey, 386, this is Tony. How can I help you? Hi, Tony. I'm so happy you took my call. I called Thursday like you told me to for the relationship reading, and I didn't get in in time. Oh. And this show ended so I'm calling back again so is it okay if I touch on that subject absolutely bring it how can I help you okay I I spoke with you before about this relationship and you told me um, some very good advice well he went totally a wall starting fights all day last Monday and I broke it off with him Monday night and as I was exiting his house because he was try to pick another fight so I was leaving to go home and telling me it's not over we're not done fighting and I'm like I'm going home <laughs> I just exited and I at out walking out the living room I told his parents good night you guys I said um, I just want to let you know I won't be coming back and I won't be seeing you again but you're wonderful people and it's been a pleasure knowing you and um, you know he heard me saying that. His mom started crying and grabbed my arm. His dad started, jumped up to attention and like, no, why? What happened? Why? I said, because, you know, he's been all day starting fights with me, telling me he was happy when he was alone. And he, he was perfectly happy being uh, alone and not in a relationship. And he, he's done and throwing all this fit. And I said, I'm just done. I'm not going to be treated this way. He insults me. He devalues me, he criticizes me, he tries to discredit me, and I am not, and yells and screams at me constantly, and I'm done. He came out screaming like a raving maniac, I mean like a lunatic. His parents were screaming at him to stop, they're 90 years old, crying and screaming at him to stop, and she's been nothing but good to us, Mark, stop it, what are you doing? And they just kept crying and screaming. Anyway, long story short, then he grabbed me and started shoving me to the door. Okay, First, right he here. the door. Right here. I just, you know no. what? Here's here's what I'm gonna say. Um, first and foremost, um, you know, I, there's there's a lot I want to say about this, and and on your part, Mark's part, on everything. If somebody's trying to pick a fight with you, friend, partner, I don't I don't give a I don't give a rat's booty who it is. You just exit. You don't 
Yeah. If somebody has a hair, a wild, no, you exit way before it gets to this point. At the first sign somebody has is having a bad day and they want to make it your bad day, go. Now, I'm not saying this is Mark. I'm going to tell you a few things that we have learned with time. Sometimes when someone is trying to start a fight with us, it's for one of two reasons. They did something. And they're trying to take it out on us. They're trying, they feel guilty and they're trying to take it out on us. Or B, they want to run uh, and go do something and have a little breakup or break time so they can run and do something and think in their little P immature brain that, oh, we were on a break, so it was okay. Um, but if we turn around and do that to them, mm, that's not happening. But that's what I, that's actually what I wanted to talk to you about because I think there's a couple options there that I, I'm wondering if that's why he did it because when, when he, he started screaming at me, how dare I tell but, his parents that we were wait, woke up. Wait, 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 wait. And, I'm going to tell you something, but, but aside from all that, I know you want to tell your story. I know you want, I know your story is very important and you want to tell your story, but here's what happens. We tell the story and we diffuse our emotions. And the more we tell our story, the more we diffuse those emotions and the more normal that story becomes in our head. It just becomes a story instead of the trauma that this was. The trauma to his parents, the trauma that he literally put hands on you. He put hands on you. Girl, that should have been the headline. That's what I wanted no, to say to you. No, stop. That yeah, should, I, no, I stop. Take your hands off me. Take no, wait. I don't even, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something. I don't even need the story about he, I, you, what you said, he said, the moment he did that, you should have been dialing 911. I don't care how long you know him. I don't care his mama, daddy were there. I don't give a happy hoo-hoo. He put hands on you. The, the whole rest of the story might be, okay, he's having a bad day, but this guy's been an issue for more than a minute, okay? He's been an issue for more, way more than a minute. So you get to a point now where his words are not working. He clearly has anger issues. He clearly tries to incite drama and fighting with you, and I'm going to say, this is not only your story. This is a story for a lot of people listening. And it goes both ways. There are a lot of drama mamas out there as well as drama daddies, okay? This isn't like only men start drama or only women. This goes both ways. What I am going to say is the fact that he put hands on you and that wasn't your lead piece of this story. Dude put hands on you just because he didn't swing on you. Are you going to wait for that next? I mean, come on. That's redunculous. That's that you would never tolerate that for somebody you love. And yet you're telling me how all day he was trying to start an argument and how his parents were so traumatized. And you're not even aware of all the trauma his parents just suffered watching that whole mess when you should have just walked out early in the morning. Now, I'm not going to blame you for a man putting hands on you. I am going to say there is something with you that is blocking that out. There is something with you that puts you in a bit of denial about that because that was not your lead. That was not the headline of this. That, that to me, is almost frightening that you couldn't see that as the headline to the question that you didn't you didn't even get to your question yet you're just telling your story and i don't even know if there's a question here because and let me tell you sweet girl if the question is should i go back should we stay together no you shouldn't have been there in the first place you should have been long gone over done with Poof, magic, you are disappeared out my life, okay? There are things we can question in a relationship. There are things we can kind of say, is this, should this, shouldn't I? 
uh, you know, this guy disappeared for a week. I'm going to find out what that's about. But somebody put hands on you. You got to go. You got to go. And since the two of you don't even live together yet, and I'm not minimizing your feelings because you do not live together. Okay. I am not minimizing your feelings because you do not live together. However, the fact that you do not live together makes it easier for you to hatchet this situation. Just like, you know, again, poof, you gone. I did some magic and you disappeared now. I said, poof, I created a, a little imaginary story and now we're done. However you want to do that, however you want to say that, however you want to experience that, Stop telling the story unless you're talking to, you know, don't, don't do me a favor. Anybody, anybody listening, if you go through something like this with, with a partner, I don't, I don't care if a woman lays hands on you just because it's a woman, it doesn't make it right. If it happens once, it will happen again. Don't talk to sister, brother, mama, daddy, friend, whomever, and tell the story because as you tell the story and people start to, and I, I've had so much of this and I'm going to tell you right now, as you tell the story in your mind, you're normalizing it. You're making it more normal and it's not as shocking and traumatic. Second, as you tell the story, people are going to try like I was doing, trying to tell you how wrong this is. And you're more invested in telling the story and then as soon as we say something bad about the person who's harming you, your mind and its human nature is automatically going to pick up what's good about this person and defend them. And that is human nature. And, and it's a fact. It is a fact. You, you pull those good things because you're not ready for that ending. It's just a fact. It's like psychology. It's psychological. It's a fact. Okay. We've all done it. Maybe, maybe not when somebody's laid hands on us, but we go back to, but he's really a good person, and this was just a one-time thing, and ah, da 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 da. I don't know how to get out. We own a business together, or we live together, or we got kids together. Whatever the reasoning, the justification is. If you're going to tell this story, do it in a in a in a therapist's office, a doctor's office, or a police station where action can be taken to resolve the situation. My answer to any question that you have right now, and not that your story isn't important, but the, the outcome of what you do next is so much more important than what happened. And to me, I'm going to tell you, I need you to write down word for word everything that happened from the first argument he tried to start to the laying hands on you and wherever that went. And then you decide if you need to press charges against him for putting hands on you. And I strongly recommend you do not only for you, but for any other woman he might get involved with because you probably are not the first and you will not be the last. And I see cap guys I date. First thing I do is I look up their criminal history. And if there's anything on there that's, oh, I, I skip it. I, I'm, not, I'm not the girl that goes, I can fix that. He beat his last girlfriend. It was probably her fault. She was probably crazy. Uh-uh. That's a him problem. That's not a you problem. That's a him problem. Okay. He obviously has some serious anger issues that need to be resolved. And the second thing is if you do call the police and it does go to court and it should, he might be ordered to get some anger management classes or counseling and take a good look at himself and understand that, yeah, guess what? I have some issues. I need to work on them. I do have anger. Now, I know chances are you might not do any of this. That's not my place to tell you you have to. These are options available to you. The biggest thing I'm going to tell you you need to do, block this man. Don't give him a chance to explain it or to apologize because you've been with him long enough to know it's not going to change. 
If he has anything of yours at his house, you don't need it. Buy it new. You don't need your toothbrush, your sweater, your favorite dish. Go buy a new one. Don't let that be a reason to reconnect. Walk on. Just walk on. If you cannot protect yourself, you cannot be in this. Well, nobody should be in this relationship. Okay, this dynamic. But clearly, this is a person who doesn't understand boundaries. They don't understand how to protect you. They don't understand that their their need to their anger is an issue. Now there's so much more I could say about this and I'm I'm not going to I'm going to say the answer to any question that you have is walk on. Leave it, let it go. Don't even think and anybody that you ask about this is going to give you the exact same answer from the police to a therapist to a psychic to any friend, unless they are used to being abuse, abused and think abuse is okay. Abuse is never okay. Emotional, mental, psychological, physical, financial abuse, it's never okay and it's never right. And there's never, there's never a valid excuse or reason for it. Now, if you think I'm just, oh, you don't understand. No, I do. I do. My first relationship when I was very young, he was extremely abusive. I mean, physically abusive. And it didn't start him being extremely abusive. It started very slow with the yelling, with the arguing to the point where I don't think I should say that on the air. It's an 18 over show. Nope. But I will say it is one of my near death experiences. Um, but there was a lot of abuse. And finally, I created an exit plan and got out. So I know, because I did live with this person. So I do know, I know what I'm talking about here. The first time is just that, the first time. It's not the last time. And sometimes even with therapy, it's not the last time. So sweetie, do not go back for your toothbrush. Do not go back for your sweater. Do not go back for his parents. They've been traumatized enough by this situation. Walk on. Do yourself a solid. Think enough about yourself to protect yourself. Even if he never laid hands on you again, the fact that he verbally abuses you all the time, walk on and let it be done. That's all you can do at this point. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. I'm sorry that that took up so much of my show, but that is a very important subject. And that doesn't only go for physical abuse, emotional, psychological. If you're in it, find a way to get out, create an exit strategy and walk on because your life is worth so much more than that. I love you all so very, very much. Until Wednesday with the Relationship Show, have a, an amazing week and create miracles in your life.